uh, where uh, you're receiving is very, very well in Australia, in New Zealand, in America, in the East Coast, in the West Coast. Very glad to be, to be there. You will detect my apology for my cold at the moment, but we're battling on in spite of it. Two good folk with us in our the latest in our election forum series, which is coming to a close for now shortly. Uh, we have Mickey Larkin and Sinead Ennis of Sinn Féin. We've already had the SDLP with us and we have a, a unionist person with us tomorrow talking about their aspirations uh, in what will come in May time when you're going forward. And I have to tell you, this man, as we say in Newry when you meet someone uh, if, well, of a name that's vaguely Newryish, and maybe more than Newryish, you say, which Larkin are you? And you replied immediately. I said, there's a name comes to my mind, Barney Larkin. And Michael, Mickey told me, Barney was your father. And Barney was a great Newry man. He passed away not so very long ago. Yeah, three years, right. years ago. Two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Doesn't seem like three years. It seems only like yesterday I saw him on Hill Street and whatever. Yeah. What do you, uh, coincidentally, I'm coming to the gentleman first. I'm sorry, uh, 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 Sinead, please forgive me. No but, problem. Uh, uh, what do you work at? I'm a postman. You're a postman in your Yeah. Yeah. So you'll know all the right houses to put the voting papers in. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> at this stage, 25 yeah. years. Are you 25 years? Yeah. You don't look old enough to be 25 years I in start, anything. I started very young. Yeah, you did. You did indeed. Yeah. Short you would, trousers. You would, know, you would know my kith and kin who, in the post office, Jimmy Graham. I know Jimmy. I work beside him. Yeah. Jimmy's a good lad. Give Jimmy my, my love and best regards. I will. Um, his, his, his sister has been my wife for 50 years. A good, they're a great family, the Graham's. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. Now, yeah. enough of the, that nonsense, Rowan, talking about yourself. <laughs> Sinead Ennis. Hello. Uh, where are you from? Um, I've been living in Duralaki since 2008. And where were you before there? Um, I was born in Uri. In Uri. Yeah. yeah. But I'm a Duralaki woman now. You're a Duralaki. <laughs> and claimed me. Yeah. It's, a, it's an unusual enough name, Ennis. Yeah, it's um, it's not from it's not a Uri name. It's not definitely not a, a Burner Duralaki name. My um, I'm married to Mark, and his father is a Port of Ferry man. Wow, you're so you're a person of the Narrows. It's a it's Port an, of Ferry in Strangford. Yeah, it's a uh, peninsula name. Yeah. yeah, it's a lovely name in, in that sense of the peninsula. And Porta Ferry, of course, you, they've seemed to have rescued the, uh, the explorers. The, uh, the, the uh, aquarium there isn't going to close down. Yeah, well, that's good. I've <coughs> visited it many, many times yeah, throughout would the have years, done. and it's, yeah. it's an excellent facility. Absolutely. It'd be a shame to see it. To it see would, it, it would, it would. Why do you want to be a politician? <laughs> why indeed, why not? Well, I'll tell you why not. It's hard work. It's 24-7. You'll never, ever be regarded as getting it right. They'll be coming at you all the time. Mm -hmm. They'll bit your door down, as they say in Yuri, in order to get your attention. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a poison chalice at times. That might be the perception, but I like a challenge, and I'm ready for a challenge. And with regards to time constraints and things like that, uh, I've played county football for the last three years. So Who do you play for? I played for Down for the last wow. three years. I've had football for burn as well, so I'm used to having no free time, so that won't be any shock to the system for me. Yeah. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I want to get involved. I've always wanted to get involved. And were you always Sinn Féin from birth, from your family? Uh, well, both my parents are, are Republicans, but, you know, in our house, both me and my sister, we were always encouraged to form our own opinions. And, and I think an opinion that you've, you've formed yourself, whether somebody else agrees with it, with it or not is a mm. better value than, than something an opinion that was forced on you but I came to realize very early on that you know the decisions that affect my life going forward and, and the lives of everybody in this community from our you know an, an all-Ireland point of view which is where which is I see myself as an Irish person you know ultimately I would like this, mm. this country to be, to be reunited those decisions aren't going to be made in Belfast or Newry or London. It's going to be made on an all our, you know, all island basis. Mm. And for me, Sinn Féin is the only party offering offering that. They're the only all Ireland party. Every other uh, other party in this island is a partitionist party. With the well, the SDLP would say to you if they were here that they want a united Ireland as well. Yeah, well, they might put that on their election manifesto, but you have to actually do it. You have to actually mean what you say and, and not talk out of both sides of your mouth. Mm. But yeah. the reality is you can't do, do whether you're talking straight out of your mouth or out of both side of your, sides of your mouth. A united Ireland is not something 
that you confidently expect to happen in the next two generations. Rowan, if we didn't expect it to happen, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Myself or Mickey or any of our electric reps wouldn't have got involved if we didn't expect that to happen. Now, it may not happen, and I'm hoping it will happen in my generation. And you know, it's up to we're the ones with it's rest on our shoulders, it's our responsibility to make, to make sure it does happen. But just with, with regards to the SCLP, you know, they don't have any representatives. If they're serious about all Ireland politics, they don't have they haven't organized in the 26 counties, so they're not actually practically doing what they're claiming to you know they're claiming to be. They would say to you, they're not here, I can't speak for them, but I'm, I, I'm required to give you a, another point of view. Yeah. They would say to you that they are where, uh, where their electorate is, they're serving the electorate, and this, uh, this, uh, the, the real politique, as far as they're concerned, is that any united Ireland will grow from the platform of here. And it's a platform of service to the people who elect them here in, in Northern Ireland at the moment. Yeah, but the same could be said of Sinn Féin. But we've made strides and inroads in the South and we've actually, we claim to be an all Ireland party and we've actually organised ourselves yeah. all across the island. So that's just all I'm Remember, it remind me how many people have you in the doll at the moment? Um, in the doll, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure of how many TDs we have at the minute, but um, I think we... We have 14, 14 at the minute, yeah. actually. Yeah. I think we have 14. 14. We're hoping to increase that representation uh, in the next election. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty confident of making a few gains there. Yeah. Young people, you're both young. It's, it's the new face of Sinn Féin. You're the new, you're the new generation, yeah. Michael. Yeah, we are, I hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see, you see a renewal within the party constantly. There's always a turnover of personnel and people. There's always young youth coming forward to fill, to fill the positions. That's a good thing, because the future is the youth. Yeah. Yeah. It also could be a bad thing. Youth could equate with inexperience. Well, you don't be long building experience in Sinn Féin. Yeah. Have e has either of you had experience in community politics with your local clubs and communities and people? Well, uh, I've lived in Drummond for the last 15 years and I've been involved in, in local campaigns and up there, yeah. including community safety group campaign to, get, to achieve a new uh, Health centre for Make Village, for instance, yeah. and uh, other things across the community, cleanups in uh, some of the estates and things mm. like that. Mm. Um, being a postman for 25 years, mm. people approach you with problems anyway. You they know, do, so uh, uh, <coughs> being door to door, you hear about people's problems. Being in Sinn Féin, you know how you do, <coughs> you learn how to deal with them, yeah. how to help people, yeah. and uh, that's what it's about. I feel yeah. the uh, the future for you in politics is it are you going to retain the dual life of being a postman and being a politician or will you do you aspire eventually to become a full-time politician i have no aspirations to be a full-time politician or a politician as such uh, it was an honor to be selected for the party and I, I, it'll be a privilege if the uh, people of steve gullion uh, deem it for me to represent them in yeah. the council come may Yep. In the new super council, um, Mickey, how did they how did they approach you to be to be a candidate? What did what, what they obviously sat you down somewhere and you had a conversation, and they identified certain uh, qualities in you. What were those qualities that they talk talked to you about? Well, I, sp I suppose uh, local knowledge is a big thing. The mm. fact that I have been a postman for so long, door to door in the area, I know so many people. Um, I'm hard working. Yeah. I've been hard working within the party. I've been a Republican activist for 30 years. Yeah. Uh, it's good to see that they had the confidence in me, that they realized that I will continue to work for the people, mm -hmm. work for the party. Uh, that's essentially uh, the top of my list. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're, if, uh, we'll return to you if we mention it. Mm -hmm. uh, in looking around the panorama of this area of Crot Leave, what are the issues that you feel you're going to have to address immediately if elected? Well, I'm already addressing issues uh, immediately. I, I'm, you know, myself and Mickey and um, four others are been co-opted onto the council since January. So oh, you, you're already we're there. already yeah, there. So in a co-op situation. You know, and what are those main issues for you? At well, the moment? just. Uh, Yesterday, I spent quite a bit of time out in Savile. They're having a community issue out there. Just, uh, there's a public meeting in the GA hall. And that, that issue is what? It's just regarding Nan Sands Park, and I think there's a, there's a bit of an issue over um, 
over ownership of it and, and things like that. So I don't want to really preempt anything. It's still sort of in negotiation stages. But I was out there yesterday offering my support to the community out there. So um, as Mickey said already, you know, we're already getting stuck in. Our phones are hopping. And, yeah. you know, it's just the day-to-day -day things that people worry about. You know, I had was heavily, heavily involved in... Um, getting a few road upgra uh, upgrades in the roads around Barn Primary School, around Carrick Primary School. And um, do, you find, do you find that people, you know, th th that those who can fund the improvements, are they listening to politicians or have, are, they, are they skilled in building a barrier between you and getting the thing done? I think uh, people are very reluctant to part with money in any, any walk of life, but that's where we come in and that's the role I see local councillors going forward that's the role we should be um, you know where we should be getting involved to, to persuade people that funding for local services is vitally important um, I've watched this program before I know you're very passionate about the hospice as well so, oh, indeed you know yeah. things like that should not fund it. it shouldn't be down to local people to constantly fork out and fundraise things like that should be funded I mean here, here. to find plenty of money to go to war they can find money to, to fund the hospital. You could be writing my column or, uh, <laughs> from it. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And is that something that you will take, both of you, the hospice issue, full funding from governments? Oh, well, yeah, I think it has to be pushed for, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's a vital service. Everybody knows somebody at some point in their life who's been affected by, by cancer or by other illnesses that the, the, the hospice uh, cater for. And it, it's a vital service that we really can't do without in this area. And we're lucky indeed. to have it in Uri. Indeed. You yeah, know, indeed. We need to look after it. Yeah. Can I ask you about the things on your arm, the bangle, the bands? <laughs> what are they about? Oh, this is going to be very embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I'm a massive Eurovision fan. Yeah. And for my 30th birthday, my husband very kindly uh, booked a trip for us to Malmo. So we went to, uh, we went to the Eurovision in Malmo. So it was... Uh, a lifelong dream realised in May. Well, yeah. just that just yeah, is not embarrassing at all. <laughs> that tells me one, you've, you're, you're a human being. Two, that someone loves you enough to do that, and that's wonderful. You know, mm -hmm. are they both of European provenance? Uh, well, this the pink one. Uh, European. Yeah, the pink the pink one is was our our pass to get into the fan village. Ah, so yeah. I. Uh, I'm sure my husband will be slightly embarrassed when I tell this to your listeners, but uh, I signed us both up for the the fan club of Ireland, wow. the Eurovision fan club of Ireland, so... Well, I'm only going to, I'm, I, two things, I'm only going to support you, one, if you're elected, because I know which side my bread's buttered on, <laughs> and secondly, if you compete in it yourself. If I could sing, I would be competing in it, believe me, you're yeah. one, I, yeah. I really would, so, yeah, that's what's, I'm, I'm reluctant to part with them. Well, I can understand It's a reminder that. of very, yeah. a very good time. Of course, but your whole life is a good time, you look, you seem a happy person, you play football. I play football, yeah, yeah, Where I do. Where did that I'm, start for you? Well, in the back garden, <laughs> mm. uh, there's just me and my sister, so, you know, Dad took us out with the ball and we were toe tapping out the back garden from both of us when we He's were He's not one of these small. dads who tries to live out his own <laughs> dreams through his children. No, not at all. No, I was, I was always interested in football. <coughs> you know, other people were running around yeah. with Barbies, I had a football under the arm. Wonderful, but, wonderful. Um, I started actually playing football for Clevey and then when I moved to Burn, um, Sorry, when I moved to Darlaki, I transferred to Burn. So mm -hmm. I've been playing well, no for Burn. No better place could you be playing? Oh, they're just they're great, a great club. They're one. Of, I think they're maybe the first in Ireland who, first in Ireland who uh, have, flood have the, the, the floodlights That's and right. the, the multi pitches That's right. where you're all training. Yeah. yeah, they're very very well organised. So they mm, are. In the, they the, are. I've I haven't enjoyed football more. You know, since I've been playing out ah, there. So and I've made a lot of lot of really good friends out there. So that's where. Um, I started playing for Down then, for the last, wow. about three years ago, I, I got called up to the county panel, I've, I've been playing for well done. Down for three years. Okay. Now that's had to take a, that's had to be put in the back yeah. burner for... Are you a midfielder? A midfield for, um, for a club. Yeah, I thought you might have been midfield. I'm a midfielder for a club. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Make it. Save for hands. Save for hands. I beg your pardon, please forgive me. Uh, the, uh, your own issue, you're, you're looking at the f swathe of issues that are there for you, hospice you're committed to, and that will continue. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what other big issues are you keen to bring forward and make a difference in? Well, in, in the Sleep Building Ward, uh, the issues are historical, really. Uh, decades of underfunding for services, mm -hmm. um, lack of childcare in the area, mm -hmm. uh, the need for that new health clinic in Make, 
which is which really it was needed decades ago. Yeah, you pushed yeah. that along. Yeah. Uh, with my colleagues, uh, Megan Farron and Packy McDonald, formerly. Yeah. Um, the, uh, all, all the infrastructure in the area, there's a lack of infrastructure. There's been no money spent over the decades mm -hmm. due to the militarization of the area. Mm -hmm. um, it's now time to make up the difference there. You know, the, uh, as I say, childcare in the area, not great. We've got after school clubs that are doing a great job that need funding. We've uh, infrastructure as far as the uh, well, the water, mm. which crisis two, year, two or three years ago, thankfully has been rectified. It's, it's not part of the problem that there is such confidence in the people of South Armagh that you disguise the fact that you are underprivileged. The people of South Armagh are very resilient. Mm. If there's a problem there, they will solve it themselves. You know? um, if it and needs, maybe, if, maybe you'll be, let's solve it yourselves. <laughs> well, that's true. Um, I mean, if you step up to the mark, you see a statutory agency stepping back. Mm. Um, it's the responsibility of elected reps to represent the people, and when there is a problem that's brought to us, it's for us to go to the statutory bodies. Mm. If there's problems with uh, broadband, is a big thing in yeah. Saint-Germain. Mm. Uh, lack of it in many areas of the country. Um, Sinn Féin's committed to that, to 100% coverage there. Um, the same with the mobile phones. Mm. Sinn Féin is committed to 100% coverage. Uh, we want to abolish the Roman charges, which is ridiculous that mm. uh, companies that are based north and south mm. are charging their, their customers. What was all that business recently at the council that the Sinn Féin people left the council when the Roman charge, <laughs> hiding in the toilet, yeah. somebody said, what was all that about? Oh, yes. can, can you deal I, with that uh, Well, I can't us? deal with that because I was one of those people. No, uh, <laughs> you left the chamber. I left the and chamber. And could you have secured mm. uh, the vote uh, 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 to end roaming charges? Oh, well, here, it's not that easy. It's not, uh, the council itself will not end roaming yeah. charges. But I'm keen to hear you tell us about it because I frankly don't understand what it was all about. But you, you obviously were there and you, you well, do. The, uh, the UK government has a, a, a program in place to uh, target areas where there's very little mobile coverage. Mm -hmm. And now we have 3G and 4G sets, you know, so mm -hmm. you, could, uh, you can have internet access. Yep. Um, South Armagh and areas of South Down are total not spots, as they say. You can't get coverage at all. Mm -hmm. in, in some areas, you can't even, <coughs> you can't even get, you can't even roam on the southern networks because there is no coverage. So this, uh, this program with the, the government has spent millions on is to position mass and provide full coverage in the area. Now, uh, New and Morn District Council policy at the time was uh, for no mass to be positioned within mm. 500 metres of, of homes. Sinn Féin policy is that no mass should be positioned within 400 metres of homes, mm. schools, hospitals, yeah, yeah. Okay. and uh, that uh, local consultation should take place mm. with the locals. Uh, the issue with the council, um, the company that's going to create these, the, the systems, Aquifer, I think, I believe they're, they're called, mm -hmm. um, they, they were demanding a, a quick response from the council for change of policy. Mm -hmm. So time was limited. Um, the first vote that was taken, it was, de, it was actually decided to re refer it back to another meeting so that mm -hmm. more information could be had. Mm -hmm. At that meeting, which was called a short notice, uh, there was, I think there was only 14 mm. councillors there, I was yeah. one of them, mm. but unfortunately at the time I had only an hour to spare between work. Yeah. So I called in, spent the hour and had to leave before the vote was taken. Mm. So I wasn't actually hiding in the toilet, I'd returned to work. Mm. You know, mm. so, in a uh, sense, so you, you, is it inaccurate to describe it as uh, the company uh, was withdrawn a certain, withdrawing a certain carrot from you, you were going to get a some large yes uh, as a consequence of agreeing it quickly, and that's what they wanted. Uh, well, the, co the company states that uh, the council policy would negate Satan mass anywhere, mm. which isn't true in, in effect because uh, it's the planning process that yeah. decides whether a mass mm. will be set up mm. in an area or not, and they don't necessarily take into account what, what the council policy is. One of the things I, I found, either of you might have an answer to this, it's not a political question, it's a very straightforward one. I, I can't figure out, you, you alluded to it earlier, we have 3G and we have all kinds of fancy communications material that we put, not, not that this is very fancy, this is a, a Blackberry held together with sellotape, but <laughs> you know, we're worried about masts 500 yeah. miles away, um, 500 uh, yards away, yeah. mm -hmm. but we're not worried about this, mm -hmm. you know, a, a millimetre away from our brain mm -hmm. and children this size here. 
surely you've got the wrong end of the stick here in uh, the council in having any policy four or five hundred meters surely it's this is the problem and it's been scientifically shown previously that it's not the mass that's 500 mi uh, meters away that it's the device that's a millimeter away mm -hmm. maybe this needs looked at again mm -hmm. I, well I, sorry you want? no i don't claim to be any technical whiz but uh you know, it's going to be very hard to persuade people to put the mobile phone down. I mean, it's constantly, you, you, you walk down the street and, every, yeah. you know, nobody's looking you woman. directly in the eye. They're like this. Oh, yeah. There's a woman in uh, New Zealand recently. She walked off the end of the pier. She was <laughs> reading it. She was texting. She walked in the ocean. But, uh, yeah. no, I, I'm sure. But you know I, the point of making, to, uh, you know. I accept the point like of we're, making. We're, 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 we're sort of hoarding up future ill health, perhaps. Maybe we need to look at our dependence on on. Oh, on yeah. those devices, yeah, yeah, you know, and start yeah. maybe talking yeah. to each other face to face rather via email and text. Absolutely, <laughs> it's much better to do. Well, listen to me. Uh, you, it's all, it's all go for you, mm -hmm. and uh, we wish you well in Thank what you. you're doing. Thanks very much, Ron. Uh, as we wish all the parties well in what they're doing, because our service to the community, just as our service, your service to the community, is politics. Our service to the community is to give all of the aspirant politicians mm -hmm. their opportunity mm -hmm. to speak their their case and you've done that today is there anything you want to say before we we uh, draw this to a close uh well i'd like to thank you for the opportunity for inviting myself and, and michael here me. today and um you know just before i go like uh me going forward um you know, in my, my future aspirations as a councillor, I want to prioritise uh, community safety. That will be um, a major a major issue for me. Mm -hmm. I'm a recently qualified CRJ practitioner and, and believe you've had some experience with the, the guys from CRJ. Um, over, yes, you've, they were very good. Yes, here, so. I found them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, especially in rural areas, most of my... my That's the commu co restor restorative yeah. justice. Yeah. Community restorative community justice restorative people. Community restorative justice yeah. Ireland, yes. Yeah. So, um, I've been a practitioner you know, recently qualified, I've, I've mediated on a few cases and it's a valuable, valuable resource for this community. And just yourself, Rowan, you know, in, in your your position that you're in and to influence people, those with the money to invest in organisations like that really need to, or, to invest in organisations mm. like that and it's very important that we have, we retain that resource mm. in this area. Okay. And hospice forever. And hospice forever. <laughs> Michael? Oh, thanks very much, Rowan. Uh, in conclusion, I'd just like to commit myself to the people of Sleep Gullion and uh, ensure them that if elected in May I will continue to work for them as, as hard as possible. Uh, locally, yes, we should be supporting the hospice 100%. My father was there for the last few days of his life and only for them uh, and and the service they provide. We would, warm, been, we would have been lost. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. I have a warm memory of your dad. Mm. He's a, he, he never passed me without greeting me. He often spoke of you. Really? Very fondly too, yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a huge privilege, yeah. thank you. Hill Street and Mill Street. Yeah, Hill Street and Mill Street and Mary Street too. <laughs> that's it, yeah. That sounds like the beginning of a, of a sonnet. <laughs> Hill Street and Mill Street and Mary Street too. Well they be. brought out the best of us, that's what they do. <laughs> Listen to me, go well, take care. Thank Play you, Play some Roland. music, Thanks Andrew. Thank you.